Welcome to part 3 of the Mongoose Hello World series. In this part we're going to look at the topology diagram and see how we get our data from the database to a form in WinStudio. We'll introduce the event system and a few key concepts in developing with minimal code. In WinStudio, open the items form. I'll open it by selecting it from the most recently used form list. Notice that when it opens, it doesn't automatically query the data we entered in our previous session. Instead, the form opens and does an auto-insert, so we're looking at a new unmodified row. If we want to query the data, we can use the refresh icon on the toolbar or use the shortcut F5. Let's look at the topology diagram to see what just happened. When we clicked refresh, WinStudio sent an IDEO request XML to the application server where the IDEO runtime processed the XML and built a SQL select statement, which was sent to the database. Results were returned from the database where the IDEO runtime packed them up into a response XML, which was sent back to WinStudio. WinStudio then rendered the data in the form. The IDEO request interface is a simple, consistent interface provided by the Mongoose IDEO runtime and forms the basis of all the operations of the forms you build. It's also available for programmatic integration via SOAP, Web Service, .NET Class Library, COM Library, and Documented XML Schema. In addition to session and metadata related requests, the core of the IDEO request interface is load collection, update collection, and invoke. Suppose there were millions of rows in our items table, and we only wanted to see the items whose name started with B. Well, the answer is filter in place. Press F4 to enter filter in place mode. Enter B asterisk in the item edit box, and then press F4 to execute the query. What just happened? When we executed filter in place, the IDEO request XML that was sent to the application server had the filter we entered on it. The IDEO request processor processed it into a SQL select statement again, but this time it had a WHERE clause on it. The result is that we just queried the two items on our store that started with B. Now press F4 to enter filter in place mode, and clear the filter criteria by selecting Actions, Filter, Clear in place, or press F5. Type greater than 99 in the cost field, and press F4 to execute filter in place. Now we only see the items whose cost is greater than 99. Well, we want our items to refresh when it's open so we can see all the items in our store, so we need to set the form's initial command to refresh. To do that, enter design mode, select site default as our editing scope, and click on the form background to bring the form properties into focus. In the properties panel, expand behavior, and in the initial command dropdown, we have a few options. An initial command of refresh will open the form and query the data. An initial command of filter will bring up the associated query form where you can specify a variety of filter criteria. Filter in place will open the form in filter in place mode so we can query specific data. Add will open the form without querying any data with a new row in the primary collection. This is the default behavior as we've seen. The last form initial command in the list is event event name. This allows you to execute a form event as the form initial command. We want to query the data when the form opens so we can see the items in our store, so select refresh for our initial command. For the changes to take effect, we need to save and close the form, then reopen it. There's a button on the toolbar that'll save and close the form for us, so I'll press that, and then select the items form from the most recently used form list. Now when our form opens, it refreshes and we see the data. Go ahead and close the items form. One of the goals of Mongoose is to allow you to build and allow your users to extend your application with a minimum amount of coding. The form event model is a major piece of accomplishing that goal. To see how events are interacting with forms as we use them, we can use the built-in diagnostics. In the View menu, click on User Preferences, and on the Diagnostics tab, make sure that General is enabled, Form Events are checked, and Include Event Handlers. Click OK back to the form and open the Diagnostics panel by going to View, Diagnostics. Now open the Items form, and we can see several entries in the Diagnostics panel. There are standard events that are generated as the user interacts with forms. At the bottom we see Form Event Standard Form Refresh. 
This is due to our initial form command that we just set. We can generate standard events which trigger WinStudio's response, and you can handle standard events by creating event handlers. You can also create your own events. Let's generate and also handle a standard event so we can see this in action. Enter design mode, and in the toolbox on the left, click on button. The toolbox contains form components like edit boxes, combo boxes, and buttons that we can place on our forms. With the button tool selected, we can click on the form and drag to create a button. With the button selected, click on the events tab so we can designate the event that this button generates. For primary event, we want to select standard form refresh. This event is the same one that's generated when you click on the refresh button on the toolbar. For a button component, WinStudio generates whatever we have in this primary event field when the button is pressed. Go into run mode, clear the diagnostics log, and click on the button to test it. The first thing listed is event name standard form refresh. Clear the log and press F5 to refresh. Again, the first thing listed is standard form refresh. Both actions are executing the same form event. Go back into design mode and select Edit Event Handlers, and click New. Event handlers wait for events to be executed and respond. They won't do anything without an event to trigger them. Event handlers are stored in metadata and have response types or actions, some attributes that apply regardless of type, and specific metadata based on the response type. The event we want to handle is Standard Form Refresh Completed. Set the response type of this event handler to set values. And in the parameters field, click the ellipsis. Type hello world into the success message field and click OK, OK, and done to get back to the form. What this is doing is that when the event standard form refresh completed is executed, our event handler will respond by displaying a message box which says hello world in it. Go to Run Mode and click Refresh on the toolbar. There we go. Since our button is executing the same event, we expect to see our event handler triggered when we click our button too. One of the ways Mongoose allows you to develop with minimal coding is by using substitution keywords interpreted by WinStudio. Go back into Design Mode and go up to Edit, Event Handlers. With our event handler selected, click on Edit. Click the ellipsis in the Parameters field, then on Type Specific Parameters and Variables. In addition to the components on a form and the properties on the IDO collections defined on the form, you can also work with variables. Variables are name value pairs that can be temporary or persistent, global to all forms or part of the current form. We'll set the value of a variable, which by default will result in WinStudio creating a temporary form variable. Click New and type Test for Target, and in the value type P parenthesis Description close parenthesis. When the event standard form refresh completed triggers our event handler, WinStudio will interpret any substitution keywords it finds in the value specification. In this case, P, standard for property. The result will be that our variable name test will be set to the contents of the current description property. Click OK back to the form and save. Go to Run Mode and click Refresh. To verify that it worked, we can look at Variables. Go into Design Mode, select Edit, Variable. Click on Test and click Edit. It should take the value of the primary collection of data property description, which is 45 pounds, and place it into the variable named test. It looks good. We can also bind components to variables. In the toolbox, select the edit box and click and drag one onto the form. In the properties panel, expand data source and in the binding field, click the ellipsis. In the Type drop-down, select Variable and click Edit. In the Variable drop-down, select our test variable, click OK and OK. 
Notice that the binding field now reads variables.test. You can use the ellipsis on the binding field to walk step by step through this like we just did, but if you know what to type, you can just type it here. Go to run mode, clear the 45 pounds text in the edit box, and click refresh. The description property value again goes into the variable, and therefore into the edit because it's bound to that variable. Let's take this one step further. Instead of our button generating the event standard form refresh, and then having our event handler handle that event, let's have our button generate an event that we create named green. Then when the event handler sees the event green, we'll have it respond by displaying the hello world message box. In design mode, select the button, and we want this button to generate the event green. Next, click Edit, Event Handler, edit our handler, and change the event name to Handle to green, and OK our way back out. Save and go to Run Mode. And click the button. In the diagnostic log, we can see that when we click the button, our event named green was executed. When the event handler saw the event green, it responded by displaying our message box. Let's recap. First, we looked at how users working with collections on forms results in traffic from WinStudio through the IDEO runtime on the app server to the database and back. We briefly explored variables and finished up by introducing the event system. For more information on Mongoose, visit the portal or send us an email at mongoose at infor.com. We'll see you in part four.